morning. We're, we're here for the Wednesday devotional, music devotional, and uh, that's going to sing with me in a little bit here. We're going to do a little bit of a, a devotion, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about one of the songs that we're going to sing. We're looking in, in our music today at the humility of Christ and what it meant for him. Um, we, we often celebrate, you know, the birth, and we get excited about the stable and the stories, but um, what did it mean for Christ to come in that form. And, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8, which is part of the Christ hymn that's found there, says this, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. And that, that word exploited um, means to hang on to something, to, to grasp it in a way that you're not willing to let it go. And so this Christ hymn tells us that, that Jesus didn't regard his equality with God as something that he just had to hang on to. He couldn't let go of that to fulfill the mission that God had for him. But the next line says he emptied himself. And we have to think about what was it that he emptied himself of. He emptied himself of heaven. I mean, he, he, he came from heaven earth the earth that he created um, and when he did that in human form um, he was no longer omnipresent he took on humanity which is bound by a body it's bound by time it's bound by geography and space and so even in in that transition he had to let so much of, of what it means to be God, he had to let that go in order to accomplish the mission that he had to come and save his humanity. And Paul says he took the form of a slave. He, he was humble, being born in human likeness, being found in human form. He humbled himself. Um, I don't think Paul is adding on that that was something else that he did. I, I think Paul is saying that all of what I've said above means that he's been humbling himself throughout this process. And then he humbled himself further. He became obedient to the point of death and even death on a cross. And so much of the artwork that we see at Christmas time, a lot of times we'll see a manger scene, but somewhere in that manger scene in the artwork, we'll see the shadow of the cross. So that what we see is that you know, we often say that he was born to die. Well, the fact is anybody who's born is going to die. That just, you can't have one without the other. And so when Christ came in human flesh, it also guaranteed that he was going to die. And he knew that. He did it anyway. And it was a horrible death. It was a death on a cross. And it was a death that carried the weight of our sins. And so when we find great joy at Christmas time it's not just the birth but it's also knowing the end of the story knowing what Christ came to do and that he accomplished what he came to do and that we live in light of that and our lives should be different because of that John tells us that the word became flesh and he made his dwelling among us or he tented among us and we often say that Jesus is fully man and fully God and that's kind of a, a hard very hard concept to grasp. But these two songs that we're going to sing today deal with that at some level. They're talking about the humility of Christ, and they're dealing with this idea that, that he was God, and yet he was human. And how do we reconcile that? And we can't completely, but we can also try to grasp and understand what it meant for him to come for us. The first song we're going to be sing, sing for you today is Thou Who Wast Rich, beyond all splendor and um, it's based on 2 Corinthians 8 9 that says this for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich and then I'm just going to read a little bit of the story of this hymn uh, the lyrics of thou who art who was rich beyond all splendor were written in China by a man named Frank Houghton who was an Englishman and the words the music and the story behind the writing of this hymn make this song one of my favorite Christmas carols. And what follows is written by a man named Chip Stam. His great aunt and great uncle were missionaries in China during the period of uh, time that 
this hymn was written, uh, and he tells this following story. This hymn was written at a particularly difficult time in the history of, the mission, of missions to China. Missionaries had been captured by the Communist Red Army and released in poor health after over a year of suffering. Others had been captured never to be heard from again. In 1934, the young missionaries, John and Betty Stamm, my great aunt and uncle, were captured in Anhui and beheaded. The news of these stories had reached the mission's headquarters in Shanghai. Now, this was a very dangerous time for both Chinese Christians and foreign missionaries. Frank Houghton, who was the editorial secretary for the China Inland Mission, decided that he needed to begin a tour through the country to visit various missionary outposts and encourage them. While traveling over the mountains of Sejuan, the powerful and comforting words of 2 Corinthians 8 9, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, were transformed into this beautiful Christmas hymn. Frank Houghton was consecrated as Bishop of Sezuan in, in 1937. For the difficult years of, of 1940 to 1951, he served as General Director of the China Inland Mission, at a time when most missionaries were either interned or evacuated. Although some would return after World War II, by 1953 there were no more foreign missionaries allowed in China. What Hudson and Taylor had begun almost a hundred years earlier would be left to the Chinese Christians to continue. And so as we sing these two songs to you today, we're going to be singing two songs. Uh, the first one is um, one you may not be familiar with. It's Thou Who Wast Rich Beyond All Splendor, which is what I just read the story about. And then we're also going to, to do one that you are familiar with, Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne, both dealing with the humility Christ, thou who wast rich beyond all splendor.
didst leave thy throne and thy kingly crown when thou camest to earth for me. But in Bethlehem's home there's there found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming thy royal decree. But in lowly birth didst thou come to earth, and in great humility. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. The flocks is found rest, and the birds their nest in the shade of the forest tree. But thy couch was the saddle, the son of God, in the deserts of Galilee. Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Thou gavest, O Lord, with the living word that should set thy people free. But with mocking scorn and with crown of thorn, they bore thee to Calvary. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. When the hymn shall ring and the choir shall sing at thy coming to victory, let thy voice call me home, saying, yet there is room, there is room at my side for Rejoice, Lord Jesus, when thou comest and callest me.